Hey everybody, welcome back to CSS3 in 30 days. Today's day number 26, and we're gonna be building something really exciting. But first of all, you might notice that my microphone is in a really weird position. I realized with this Rode extendable boom arm that you can mount to your desk, it's really versatile, it's quite nice. Uh, but this whole time I've been hanging it in front of my face, which means I can't actually see my screen that well, which makes it a little bit difficult to record coding tutorials. So I maneuvered it in this really unusual, awkward looking position. And I thought, hey, I'll give it a try for this round. So here we go. Over here in my browser, still adjusting this thing. Not gonna promise we're keeping it this way, folks. All right, we have got the Day26 3D layers and what am I talking about when I say 3D layers? Well. Let me show you here. To you right now, this might look like a, just like a normal, a normal mock-up. Uh, but the fact is that I created it in Photoshop using SVG uh, format, which means it's a vector format, which means it's infinitely scalable and super sharp regardless of your screen size. And if you make it bigger or smaller. So I created this mock-up, I included the Photoshop document in the image folder as well. So maybe you might wanna see and play around with it. But this is what happens when I hover over this mock-up. Watch this. That's super cool. So you might already think that's amazing. I want to know how to make that. Or you might think I have some ideas and how I want to use that. Essentially, the reason why we're doing this is one, it's a really big challenge that we're doing a lot of really interesting maneuvering using uh, different, different planes, the X, Y, and Z planes using transitions, transforms, and animations and all that sort of thing. So it's a challenging little task. It's a super impressive way to display almost anything in a showcase format on your website. So a mock-up, a blueprint, a wireframe, even images or you know different elements. It's really exciting. Now I wouldn't use it as a functional piece like for navigating or something like that, but to display something in an impressive manner to show the layers of your work or something like that, this is the way to do it. Now, let's look at it one more time show you what's happening. So we have a back layer here, and then we have a middle layer right here, a top layer, with these three, these six circles, and this text down here, this uh, mock-up text, wireframe text, just a bunch of lines that mimics text. And then we have the uh, these two icons here on the tippy top, I call it. And so in one uh, layer, just looking at it straight, it looks like a normal mock-up, but when you hover over it, it extends out and shifts, it changes, and it's using a 3D transformation in CSS3. So why don't we jump in and get started. Over here in the code editor, we have the Day26 3D layers. I have all of the assets there, index, sandbox, final, and the image folder, which includes SVG files which are not image files technically, they're actually SVG files, which stands for Scalable Vector Graphic. So it's not an image, but you can add it to your websites and web pages using the image tag. So it, it sees it as an image, but the file actually isn't a technical true image. And then I have the layers.psd there if you wanna open it up in Photoshop and check it out, play around with it and do whatever. So here's the markup right here. In a div with the class of layers, I have four image tags in there. They're, they are commented out because uh, you will see once I uncomment it, it creates a really, uh, the really large vector graphics that take up most of the page you have to scroll down. So for visualization purposes, showing you the demo, I didn't want you to see that. So now go ahead and uncomment that. And then you will have your four images, scalable vector graphics. Now, if you check it out in the browser, it's gonna look really bad, massive files like this but we're gonna be using this and manipulating these in CSS to make them work. Okay, so now that we've got those SVG images, SVG graphics in there, what we're gonna do is head over to our sandbox and we're gonna get started with our coding adventure for this 3D layer effect. Let's start off by selecting layers and then we're gonna tell it position, relative, a minimum height of, now it's gonna be a specific number, I'm gonna say 640 pixels. Uh, and that's simply because the vector graphic here, if I were to open it, you can see here the width and the height uh, are this by default. That's really large. So I'm going to scale that down 
to about one third of the size. Now it's a rough calculation, but I basically took the, these and divided them by three, and that's essentially the numbers we're using. I rounded it up a little bit just so that they were easy numbers uh, to calculate. Max width is going to be 360. So now we're gonna have the proper ratio in this parent layer. And now next what we're gonna do is we're gonna say layers and then select the image tags. We're gonna say position absolute because we're gonna be moving them all around. Max width is gonna be 100%. So it's going to it's going to fill out the content the parent con, the parent container and now we're going to say height is 100%. It's going to fill out that parent container uh, height wise as well, length wise, vertical wise, whatever. Transition we're going to say all ease 1600 milliseconds, and that's important because we're going to be doing a transition to give us that animated effect. Now we're going to say transform style, and we're gonna say preserve 3D because we're gonna have the transform, uh, we're gonna do some uh, transforming and some shifting and perspective, you know, 3D animations and maneuvering. And this preserves that 3D plane because we want it to actually look three-dimensional, not like it's skewed. So preserve 3D. So we're gonna save that. And now if you check it out in your browser, you'll see that now we have a more reasonable size. Problem here is, is that all the layers are all messed up. And that's because all these SVG graphics are the same width and same height. And SVG graphics don't really perform the same way as a PNG bitmap graphic, for example, which only takes up the size of space. So for example, this as a PNG would only take up this much space, but it actually is taking up this much space, the entire container because of the height. Uh, and it's just, it's a thing that you have to work with with SVG files. It's kind of unusual. Maybe there's a way around it. I'm not entirely experienced with playing with SVGs, uh, but for this purposes of this tutorial, this is how we're going to do it. So now we got to maneuver all these things using positions. Quite easy, but it takes a little bit of, it took me a little bit of playing around and maneuvering it using uh, pixels and everything like that. Uh, but I finally came to the, some final numbers. So let's type those in right now. So what we're going to do say layers image with the class of mid because that uh, we ha I have each of the layers the images with the class of back mid top and tippy top so we can do this with them I'm gonna say the width of the mid layer which is the not the background layer but the one just in front of it is 320 pixels and that's because we have a max width of 360 so that's the background is 360 I want this next one to be 320 and then I'm going to shift it over. This allows me to do some uh, mock margins, so to speak. So we're going to say 320, which will look something like this. You can see now it's smaller in the background right here. Now I'm going to shift it over 20 pixels. So that should give us an exact 20 and 20 on either side because its parent is 360. So 320 plus 40 is 360. So basic math. Now we're going to say layers image of the class of top. And we're going to give that one a width of 300 pixels. So now I'm taking off 20 pixels in total from that, uh, from the top layer, which is this one here, as you can see, this one with the logo and then the navigation. So now I want to shift that in about 30 pixels because it's going to be 10 pixels on either side. As you can see here, that's looking a little bit better, but the top is off. I don't like how the top looks. So now I'm going to say, top, if I said zero, it would look like this. That's because the top is at zero, but I want to move it up just about five pixels. So top negative five pixels. And that looks like that. That looks much better. Now we have this tippy top layer, which are these, uh, this film reel and the bicycle layers image. And then tippy is what I called it with 280 pixels. So I'm taking off another 20 pixels. I'm going to say left 40 pixels. And that'll look a little bit better. Uh, but now I want to say top and I want to bring it up negative 150 pixels. That should bring me up to where I want it. So now our mockup is looking much more reasonable. Now what we have to do is play with it. So this is the fun part. So we're going to create a style rule that says layers upon hover the images. So we're going to start off with transform. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take hover off for now because I want to see it while I'm deving versus 
having to hover over every single time to see my work. So I'm just going to say layers image for now. Now, this is where all the fun comes in. There's a lot of different values and functions, actually, you can add to the transform property. So by function, I literally mean something like using rotate X. This is a CSS function uh, as, a, as a value for this property. So rotate X, this will rotate the image or all the images on the X plane. So I want to rotate it 50 degrees. Feel free to play around with this in all the ways that you want. But you can see here now that something weird has happened. Um, it's shifted on an angle. Like if you're looking at something, it's shifted like this. And so that's what happened here. Now it doesn't look 3D because uh, there is one function that we have to add, but I want to add it at the end so you can see the dramatic change. So now I want to rotate on the Y plane 20 degrees. Let's see what happens. There we go. So now we've the Y plane is this one. So the X plane is this one. The Y plane is this one. And now we're going to say rotate on the Z plane. Negative 25 degrees. Let's see what happens. Okay, so now we've shifted it on this unusual angle as if it's coming, if it's going back this way and towards us this way. So on this like, um, Z plane, I suppose. If you play around with it, you'll start to see how it's moving in digital space. Now, like I said, this doesn't look right. It doesn't look very three dimensional versus this down here. You can see that looks very three dimensional, like it's coming off your screen and towards you. Well, that's because we need to add an additional function in here called perspective. Now, the perspective property or function in this case creates or enables 3D space on your screen and produces this illusion of a distance between the Z plane and myself, the person viewing the screen. So now what's going to happen is if I say perspective and then uh, let's go 1000 pixels. Now what's going to happen here, I'll, I'll explain how this value, the numeric value works, but let's see what it looks like first. So now it looks three dimensional. It actually has the proper, the proper shape. The back looks smaller than the front. It's, it looks like it's coming towards us a little bit. What if I change this to like 600? Now you can see it's way more, um, exaggerated that, that three dimensional effect. So the smaller this value, the more exaggerated the effect, because that's, that means that you are closer to this element on the Z plane. So you're looking at something closer as if I were looking at my phone like this, the back side looks smaller than the, the front side. It's got this dramatic effect. Whereas if I was like this further away, it's much less exaggerated versus that. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay. So I'm going to go back to, I'm going to say 1200. So it's, it's there. It's, it's 3d, but it's not crazy exaggerated. Now, as you can see, it's way down here. It's not in the right space. It looks kind of sloppy, especially if I hovered it, it would fall down the page. It would look really weird. So we're going to remedy that with translate. So we're going to translate on the X axis, 35 pixels. This is simply like doing uh, positioning, but in 3d space. So translate 35 pixels. That's going to move it to the left translate on the Y axis. And we're going to say zero pixels. We don't want it. That's up and down and then translate on the Z axis. And that will bring us back up to the space where I want it. So now we're looking a lot better. So if I were to say layers hover now layers, hover image, save that. Let's see what that looks like. I hover it shifts and transitions there. It looks pretty good. And that's because we did the transition property up here. If I were to take that out, this would be a lot less nice. As you can see, it's that transition that shows us we're going into three dimensional space. So now what I want to do is position these in the proper, I want them to, to expand out. I want it to like give us that, well, that effect down here where it all kind of layers out. That's nice. So we want to do that. So we're going to achieve that by individually styling each image or each layer. So I'm going to say layers, hover image of the class of mid, and I'm going to go ahead and copy this entire thing. 
paste it and change a couple of the values. Now I can, I probably could take out the values that I don't need. Like maybe if I just took out all of these and left translate Z, translate Z for us Canadians. Uh, and I'm going to change that to 240 pixels. Let's see if just having one value there works. It doesn't. The reason why is because now I'm saying that transform is not present for all the other X, Y, and Z planes. So I have to leave it in all of these values. Translate Z, I'm going to change back to 240. Check it out when I hover. You see that layer is now lifted off of the background. Copy this. Now the rest is super easy. Paste that whole thing out. Image top. We're going to change the value of the last one to 280. So that's going to be 280 pixels further on the Z plane. And I'm going to refresh and hover. Now we've got our second layer like that. Last but not least, copy that, paste it out. And now we're going to do the tippy class. And that translates Z. It's going to be as you can see in here, it's unusual the way that this floats in space is because it's a different proportions than these other elements. So we have to use different values to move it in the right, uh, in the right place. So you might think 240, 280, this one's obviously going to be 320, but that would really mess things up as you'll see here. It's just really too far. And so there's something about the size of this SVG that just means we have to change that value. So it's actually 260. I'm not entirely sure why. If I really looked into it, I'd figure it out. And maybe you have an idea, but this gives us the right effect. So now they're all about the same distance from each other in that, in space, in 3D space. And really, that is it for our 3D layer effect. Now, here's a challenge for you. Feel free to maneuver this in whatever way you want. The thing is, these, this is a little bit tricky and finicky. If you're looking for a responsive effect, right now I've hard-coded the widths so that we don't really have uh, any issues, but even in the background here, the background is a 100%. You can see things are looking a little bit different here. The other thing is when you hover over this layer, these layers, come out and then hover again at any point in that transition, it, it does like a weird, as you could see, like it kind of starts the animation from where you clicked on it or where you hovered. So it really messes with it and it's really unusual. So you'd have to do this in the right controlled space and uh, really play around with it to make sure you're doing the right thing so you don't have a really wonky looking animation. Um, this is really for demo purposes to show you what you can do with 3D space, rotates, translates, transforms and everything like that. I hope today's lesson was valuable, educational and fun for you. Thanks for hanging out for day 26. Tomorrow, we're closing in on the last few days here, and I'll see you in day number 27.